John's going to have to do this all from memory. Yeah, not a problem. I've got, we've got notes. Yeah. Um, and, well, okay, if I, if I do, I'll get on to what I've got in my left hand here in a second. Oh, dear. Oh, hang on. <laughs> just, just out of shot. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I was going to bring up the Wikipedia, actually. Where have, have I got the Wikipedia somewhere? No, wait, he's just about to read it all out anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's got the breakdown of the... Um, plot, yes. Plot, good, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which... Uh, I pre- pretty much remember totally anyway. Oh, well, which is... than, well, when's the last time you watched it? <sighs> I watched the last quarter of it uh, around Christmas time, I'd okay, say, because it was well. on Talking Pictures. So I literally just finished watching it, and I'm watching it again yes. as we talk, and I still can't remember it. So let's go. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is wrong with your memory? <laughs> Hey, it's been affected by the Martians yes. from millions of years ago. <laughs> yeah. but, we, we, Ross must be driven out of our genetics. Yes. yes. Which one? I think at the end we should try and work out uh, which ones we are. Are we the Martians or are we the normal? Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Right. Okay. James, let's do it. Britain. An ancient kingdom with legends of violence, cruelty, and torment in its blood. Join your hosts, Ross, John, and James, as they bravely tread where few would dare. Witness their journey into the horrific history of British horror. They are... The General Witchfinders. So, ladies and gentlemen, goblins and ghouls, welcome back to the 34th episode of the General Witchfinders podcast. I'm James in Bournemouth in southern England. Uh, I'm John Pountney. Are we, are we recording already? Are we? Yeah, we are. We're going I'm for it. I'm John Pountney. I'm here in the south of Wales, which is in the south of... Still in the south of Wales, here, where I am. Thank God. I am Ross in Dorchester, <laughs> after 34 episodes, still in the south of England. And this time, we watched... Quick Quick Man on the Pit, 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 a.k.a. Five five million million years to work. Get back! Who were they running from? What have they seen? Whom do they fear? There are five million answers to these questions, and every one of them is a shocker. No, stop! Terror, five million years old, spills into our time to make two worlds collide. What is happening here and now can affect the next five million years. It was what I was afraid of. The thing got a huge intake of energy. The very substance of it seemed to be coming alive. And then... And you can't see this world any longer. They feel it. They see it. The archaeologist who digs back into the past to unearth more horror than the human mind can bear. Quatermass, the scientist, who comes face to face with five million years of terror. Rony, it's Barbara. She's the one. Get down here, quick. She can see into the pit and knows the terrifying truth. He can see into the pit, but he will not believe what he sees. They were coming. Who? What were? Them. Them. He saw the creatures. They were alive. Alive? You descend into the pit of hell as you share their horror. Listen, I'm advising you all to leave. There may be grave danger. I tell you, this could be dangerous. Get back! Get back! Wait! 
But so, Quatermass in the pit, or as it's known but with our, by our US cousins, Five Million Years to Earth, is a 1967 British science fiction horror film from Hammer Film Productions. Our friends are Hammer. <laughs> a sequel to the earlier Hammer films, The Quatermass X Experiment and Quatermass 2. See General Witchfinders episode 17 for more details. The first like film ever to just have two in the title. Wow! Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. Like its predecessors, it is based on the BBC television serial of the same name, written by podcast hero Nigel Neal. It was directed by Roy Ward Baker, who is responsible for such highs as A Night to Remember and such lows as The Scars of Dracula and The Legend of Seven Golden Vampires. <laughs> See episodes 28 and 31, respectively. And this incarnation stars Andrew Keir, who featured in Cleopatra, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, and, who fans, Daleks, Invasion Earth, 2150 AD. Okay, just got in, to, to stop you there. How old do you think he was making this uh, film? I was going to bring that up. <laughs> I was going to bring out how old people are in this. Yeah. So I'm going to say, what, 35? That, I, I know he's 41 41 wow <laughs> <laughs> it is incredible did they grey um, up oh. his beard because his beard is grey in all of his films so <laughs> did they grey up his beard or was he really that grey I don't know but it's, it's just, absolutely it's terrifying. incredible isn't it yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What but, did like, he more, live more, through? <laughs> what, what did all of them live through? Yeah. <laughs> we'll get more onto the line. Come here. You're a, you're a young lad. And I'm, he's clearly 35. <laughs> this anyway, more on that. Okay, sorry. Right. Sorry. So he is in the title role as Professor ba uh, Bernard Quatermass, replacing the man who was fond of a refreshing beverage, Brian Don Levy, who played the role <laughs> in two earlier films and very good at shouting. James Donald... Uh, Barbara Shelley, who was also in Dracula, Prince of Darkness, and The Gorgon, and Julian Glover, who has been in some little-known films so known as Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and The Empire Strikes Back as General Veers, <laughs> that say, Game of Thrones, several Doctor Who stories, and loads of other stuff, including being the voice of a giant spider in Harry Potter. Which Harry Potter, Ross? Uh, the one know. with the giant spider in. Uh, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was in it twice. <laughs> Whatever. Right, okay. They appear in co-starring roles. Nigel Neal wrote the first draft of the screenplay in 1961, but difficulties in attracting interest from American co-financiers meant that the film did not go into production until 1967. Mm. The director, Roy Ward Baker, was chosen because of his experience with technically demanding productions, such as A Night to Remember, its second <laughs> mention on the podcast <laughs> this evening. This was the first of six films that he directed for Hammer. Andrew Keir, playing Quatermass, found the, making the film an unhappy experience, believing Baker had wanted Kenneth Moore to play the role. Owing to a lack of space, the film was shot at the MGM British Studios in Elstree, Boreham Wood rather than Hammer's usual home at the time, which yeah. is the Associated Press British Studios, also in Elstree. The plot of the film version was condensed to fit into the shorter running time, although, oh my God, it doesn't feel like it sometimes. <laughs> and the main uh, casualty being, so, well, we'll see, the removal of a subplot involving a journalist named James Fullerlove. <laughs> <laughs> Great Bond, bond, uh, yeah. bond name there. Oh, porn. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Well, <laughs> and the, uh, I'm not going to mention myself there. And the climax was altered slightly oh. to make it, go on, Oz. <laughs> oh, just the fact, you know, we went straight from James Fullerlove porn star into a climax so that's that was, what I yeah. saying, right? and, <laughs> and, and the fact that it was altered to make it slightly more cinematic apparently yeah. the setting for the pit was changed from a building site to the London Underground the closing scene of the television version in which Quatermass pleads with humanity to prevent Earth becoming a second dead planet was also dropped in favour of a shot of Quatermass and Judd sitting alone amongst, amidst the devastation brought by amazing the, shot says, amazing oh yeah shot. by the Martian space yeah, but weirdly looped Badly, like three oh, times. I love the loop. I love the loop. <laughs> I could watch the... that loop forever because <laughs> it's so depressing, isn't it? It's a, but it is a, an unusual ending. I'll give it that. It's an amazing ending. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then it says that the script was sent to John uh, Trevelyan of the British Board of Film Censors in December yes, 1966. This is funny. Trevelyan replied that the film would require an X certificate and complained about the sound of the vibrations from the alien ship, <laughs> the scenes of the Martian massacre. How can you complain about that? Yeah. About the clangers going mental? <laughs> right. Scenes of destruction and panic as the Martian influence takes hold. Mm. The of the devil. 
It has been suggested that to- uh, Toby Hoover's is it? I always is it Toby? It's Toby, Toby. Toby. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that Toby oh, I Hooper's, didn't know that. I always thought it was Toby. Toby. Uh, that Toby Hooper's 1985 Life Force, featuring Patrick Stewart, is largely a remake of Hammer's Quatermass and the Pit. Interesting. In an interview, yeah. director Toby Hooper d- discussed how Canon Films, the legendary Canon Films, gave him twenty-five million dollars, free reign, and Colin Wilson's book, Space Vampires. Surely then that doesn't make it an adaptation. No, but, no, but, 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 but then he just, the but then he went oh. on to say, "I just got giddy with it and went, went ahead and remade yes. a, a Hammer film." <laughs> okay, right, fine. Um, three decades on, Andrew Keir reprised the role of Professor, the Professor Quatermass in the Quatermass Memoirs, a five-part docudrama scripted by Nigel Lee and transmitted on BBC Radio Three in March 1996. Yeah, so Never heard well, that. they were talking about it because I just watched the um, the commentary and they was talking about it. And apparently. It's him talking about the events of the Quatermass, uh, the first three Lovely. Quatermass stories. Right. Okay. Uh, but then mm. they intercut it with news footage of things Ooh. which were happening in the real world around that time oh, as well, right. and how that okay. influenced the, the storylines and stuff. And it sounds really good. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to try and look that up. And if I can find it, there might be a clip of it playing uh, now. now. Then came the H bomb, the biggest threat of all. And it soon belonged to both sides. People began to wonder, will any of us see the 1960s? My character Quatermass, of course, lived in imaginary time, but the shocks he'd endured could very well have sent him into a long, long retirement, somewhere out of it all, say in the north of Scotland, and a couple of decades later he'd be there trying to write his memoirs. An experiment is an operation to discover some unknown truth. It is also a risk. The crater mass experiment, they called it. Not to give me credit, but just pinning it on me. The blame. The whole blame. For every shocking, every appalling thing that happened. And they were right. Now, this is what you know. This is me doing my homework here. This is what I'm bringing to, to the table. This is from what I describe. What I can only describe as a golden era. Right. This is a book called SFUK, published by or published in association with Channel Four later. Now, mm. for our teenage listeners, you'll have to imagine that in that you know the time before the internet in this country, BBC Two and Channel Four late at night were just absolutely a fantastic. gold mine. Absolutely, in terms in ter- of educating you in terms of things to do with culture, and more esoteric, uh, the more esoteric end of culture. And mm. Channel 4 did this really amazing series called SFUK, um, which was all about how basically science fiction and uh, British science fiction authors, films, TV, how we are just synonymous with the genre. And, it's, mm. and the, those are the days that, you know, and again, teenagers, at the end of the program, they'd say, a book in association with this show is going to be published. Yeah. Or, if you'd like to know more, send a stamp addressed envelope to this address, <laughs> yeah. and we'll send you a book. We'll send you a booklet filled with more information in it. Written oh. by Kim Newman, probably. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. He writes the introduction to this yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, I, I seem to write, and number one, this is fantastic. If you go, I highly recommend this book. Whatever you can track it down. I'm sure it's available uh, secondhand booksellers, eBay, etc., etc. But there's a really good bit in it, and I thought, oh, I'm actually going to bring this to the uh, to the podcast because this kind of something. Bear in mind how inevitably off beam we're probably going to go on this one. I thought <laughs> this was quite a good summary of what goes on and kind of the uh, the consequences of it as a uh, yeah. as a result. Quite a mess in the pit. Uh, it boldly explores the theme of cosmic atheism. Neil mm. chillingly suggesting that man's Evolution was manipulated five million years ago by visiting Martians. Rated by Neil as the best of the 1950s Quatermass serials, the last of the original trio, trio had a top-line cast to match the more lavish production values and ingenious storyline. This is, they're talking about the BBC. BBC, what? Mm. The assured visuals were complemented by some atmospheric, if strange, sound effects, courtesy of the, our friends at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, <laughs> which later provided Doctor Who with a succession of eerie, odd, and downright risable noises. <laughs> exactly. 
According to the greatest master of the pit, with the uh, red planet heading for extinction, the Martian sorts preserve their species by implanting their race memory into the minds of primitive ape men, mm. then inhabiting the Earth. Marginally more benevolent than the invaders of War of the Worlds, Neil's alien scientists nevertheless invested humanity with a race memory of mass culling in their name of genetic purity. This racism theme caused a little friction within UC management. Even Quasimass is affected by this resurgence of a long dormant Mar Martian gene that returns to haunt the present in the shape of a huge horned creature, popularly known as the Devil, collectively projected by berserk rioting Londoners. <laughs> berserk. Uh, ex exactly. Not only are the alien invaders already here, but they've been around since the dawn of man. Quasimass in the pit shows the Martians were ourselves all along. Mm. A prospect arguably far more alarming than H.G. Wells' Red Planet War Machines. Mm. Hammer optioned Quasimass in the pit in 1961, but it was another six years before director Roy Ward Baker commenced filming with Scottish Andrew Andrew actor Andrew Keir in the, in the title role. While the Gainsborough style has been cited as an influence on Hammer's own rich period gothic look, Mm. Uh, its immediate value to Baker with the experience of th with 38 films in six years, which he followed with on service. 38 uh, making, films in six years? Six years, yeah, yeah, which he followed with army service, making <laughs> instructional films and propaganda. Having spent most of the 1960s directing television episodes, notably The Saint and The Avengers, Baker felt more than happy to take on Quite a Mass in the Pit, despite some puzzlement over Hammer's blatant recycling of old material. <laughs> I've never quite understood how they got away with it. So there you go. That was just my little preamble at the start, just for everyone to say you can. You see a lot of um, TV programs made into films in this mm. uh, in this era, and like we said, it's because you can't watch it again. Like we were just talking before we came online about um, about Disney and mm -hmm. how Disney is making a, a lot of sequels again at the moment with new uh, Toy Story, new Frozen, and all that. Kind of, but but it's because people will go and see that stuff. And um, they was talking about this on the commentary, and Nigel Neal was saying that. He hated the fact that the films got their names changed in America. He said because mm. he said people went to see um, this in this country because they knew the name Quasar Mass after yeah, yeah, being yeah, on television, yeah. and it stood mm. out to them. And there was that brand recognition. Mm. He said every subsequent film in um, America that people didn't know that it was part of a, se a series <laughs> because they all had different names and mm. different actors in it and all that yeah, kind of stuff. So, it yeah. could, could put, so it was one of the reasons he thinks it didn't succeed very well in in the states, but. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem them making a, a film version of this. It's it's, it's interesting. Have, have you all seen the BBC version? I have. No. Yes. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. What do you prefer, John? Oh, I think they're very different beasts, really, because one is like six half-hour episodes or yeah. something like that, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the other one is a colour feature film with a very different feel, and it's a bit like the the Amicus Doctor Who films. Mm -hmm. And the um, they're just they they're enjoyable for different reasons. I think the the BBC version of this is very atmospheric and and quite lo-fi mm -hmm. uh, and feels kind of um, quite claustrophobic and quite weird. Whereas this is like almost the total opposite. It's quite a wide sque wide screen kind of romp. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and I think also the excitement of. Um, uh, seeing these adventures in colour as well is one of the reasons why they remade some of this stuff for cinema. Obviously, that doesn't stand for the first two Quatermass films, but I think that's a good reason for them to, especially with Doctor Who and the Daleks and this and this film as well. It's it with the Daleks film when you see it now because um, that was on over Christmas as well. I think this was on over Christmas as well. Like the Daleks film, they look so amazing in colour. The Daleks themselves, but all the sets are just so like, just dreamlike. And this film is also a bit dreamlike because it really goes to town with colour. And it, you know the 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 red jumper that um, Barbara has on is just like so vivid. And you know a lot of the colour work is very interesting on this film. I think it's one of Hammer's best films, like in their top five films. And then you remind me that Scars of Dracula and uh, uh, the Kung Fu Vampire thing <laughs> was by the same director. <laughs> yeah. And you just think, what on earth was he just having a really bad week or something i, I, just... I just think I, I, he was talking about um i don't i you were this uh hammer um went into receivership yes mm. and then they ended up just having to make films in order to clear debt would, yeah, yeah, would, yeah, would yeah. some of those later ones 
be around that era, or was that when it went into like making TV stuff? Um, so I'm not sure what point that happened. Yeah, I would say that's later on because the the I'd say they did like to um to the devil a daughter, and they did the lady vanishes, and then but that was like 1976, and I think that was when it uh, that's when they were right. they'd hit the skids. But um, around this, uh, well, in the I mean, it's it's mad to think that. This looks like such a quality production, and then you compare it to Scars of Dracula, which is only like two or three years later, which yeah. looks like it was filmed for like 50p. Yeah, maybe it was just, <laughs> yeah, they just tried to cut corners and make more stuff quickly. Well, and, they, yeah. I, I mean, there's cutting corners and there's literally making something <laughs> circular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we talk about the film? Yes, so, yeah. so, we oh, open up on, it reminded me of the opening of the original Dot 2 with, with the um, the, the police were walking down the, yeah, down the, the road. Uh, yes, it's a beautiful shot, isn't it? With the um, Hobbs Lane and the um, mm, yeah. station and stuff. Yeah, and I, I just, I get, it did make me think, think, feel, uh, think a lot of the Dot 2 films with the colours and the fashion yes. and everything. It was, it was great. Um, and I think it was a great idea to move it into a, um, underground station because as we've said before, underground stations are one of the coolest things yes. on the planet. If I could, I'd live on the tube. <laughs> it's also my dream subject to do a, a, a long-term um, project, photography product project on the tube. But I think in this case, it, the set is all the sets are just superb, aren't they? Yeah, mm. and it looks really lavish and expensive. It probably wasn't. There are some parts, as James has mentioned, the clangers on uh, acid <laughs> that don't look don't stand up quite so well it's now in uh, in four K. <laughs> scanned but yeah. um otherwise the, the actual production values look really good for a hammer film in 1967 uh it looks really good we meet um some workmen who are digging away on a very clay wall, wall. yes um uh, ex- london clay isn't it yeah mm. expect they're ex- uh, enlarging the um the railway line apparently the central yes. line no less yes so then they um and they find um a skeleton in the wall a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. Is that how you say it? Skeleton. 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 It's basic English pronunciation with the general which one. Skeleton. 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 Yeah. Do, do they find a skeleton or do they just find a skull at this skull. point? But then they which? hack at the wall and then it all just falls out and there's a skeleton there's there. Loads. Is and that later on? I'm not sure. Well. No. <laughs> I, I look, I look, dear listener, I'm not going from notes tonight because I haven't seen it. I've seen this film so many times, but I've already remembered more than Ross who watched it. Yeah, like you're right. <laughs> 30 uh, minutes ago. I'm literally watching this bit on the screen <laughs> uh, as we talk. As as this happened, I made a note of, oh my God, you know, this yeah, sort of stuff. It's, and, a, it's and, a bloody skeleton. This happened a lot. <laughs> right. They, and again, for our, for our international listeners, and especially yeah. our friends in Finland, hello. Um, this kind of thing happens a lot when they're excavating London. And the, mm. the story that I've just pulled up, it says, this is from 2008. Mm. And it says, four skeletons thought to have dated back to the Iron Age have been oh. unearthed on the site of the 2012 Olympic Park. Amazing. The remains, believed to be up to 3,000 years old, were discovered in graves close to where the aquatic centre will be built, has now been built, in Stratford, East London. Mm. They've been removed and will form a part of a year-long local project to give you locals an insight into what the area used to be like. Yes. So, yeah, they, so, to be fair, this does happen a lot. Yeah, yes. when, they, when they were building the... They built a new road uh, near me for mm. the Olympics, and when they dug that oh, road, yeah. they found a load of Vikings Ooh. who had been... Um, Deca- yeah, decapitated. Oh. Their heads put to one side. Their bodies stripped of all their clothes and just yeah. chucked into a, into a hole. So they no rest- way. and they were all like yeah. sort of like nineteen, twenty year old um, Vikings, and they reckon that they came over yeah. on like a bit of a uh, raid. Yeah. yeah, came across some people from Weymouth who just took them up on the hill, stripped them, decapitated them, and chucked well, them in a hole. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying, you know, Viking raiding parties. <laughs> If they had a reputation, you know, let's face it, you know, what Viking, re- they, the people, the good people of, of, of Dorset, Ross, yeah, yeah. dare I say, were probably a little bit worried yeah. when Nordic, Nordic team giants turned up, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> on, looking for mead and, mead and comely young ladies, I imagine, yeah. and whatever else. No wonder. Yeah, but you can go I, see them in the, in the museum around the corner from me. Right. Right, love it. Anyway, so we, we, we've already gone off. Uh, off so anyway, so they so, dig up a skull. It's <laughs> next to a spaceship. Yes. 
<laughs> That's it. Yeah. The end. And um, first of all, that my first kind of bit note is that as this kind of story gets out, the uh, the the press headline is underground ape men yeah. which i put either a i think i saw them supporting the flaming lips back in, back in 2007 and also uh, i just thought underground ape man sounds a bit like ross <laughs> <laughs> or a kink song yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> all work that's all good right yeah so yes and we then get some what i put down as intense archaeology action Yes. Well, there's a lot of excavation going on, and it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the, this, like the the main arch, uh, archaeologist, feels like he's going to be a really main character, character. at this point, doesn't he? Because yeah. he's uh, he, he's like the the focus of the story. But Quite a mass, isn't it? For, isn't well, it? it because it's because this is James Donald, who was a bigger star mm. than oh. uh, Andrew Keir at the time, and he is he has the top bill, which is really weird about this film, because he was in um, Bridge on the River Kwai and loads of the other films. So it's a bit of a weird casting. I'm sure it's his only Hammer film, um, but he's he's the kind of rational voice in this film, isn't he? And and Quatermass is quite. Um, Irrational in this yeah. film compared to mm. if you if you ignore Brian Don Levy's um, performances <laughs> in the other two <laughs> films, he's you know Quatermass is the voice of like calm and reason usually. Whereas in this film, it's it kind of changes, turns on its head, and uh, now it's um, I can't think of his name. What's his name in this? Well, the character's uh, name. Rony something yeah. Rony yeah Rony yeah Rony yeah. yes Rony Rony <laughs> <laughs> so they they find these skulls and then he he, he explains mm. to the um the gentleman of the, of the press that um he thinks that these are um Kate ape men who were uh, around a lot earlier than than and and he just so happens to have a uh, like a Plaza Paris representation of this ape man who looks to me very much like yes, um, nice. Tim Healy out of a feeder sink. <laughs> <laughs> and father of that guy from that band that the teenagers yeah, the like these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good, right? right? We might have to tweet a picture of Tim Healy. Yeah, alongside um, the picture of yeah, it is a remarkable press conference. As a man, as, as listeners, I'm sure know by now, my background in philosophy and you know, things like having to, do, like, I have to teach things like epistemology. So being sure and teaching people about when is knowledge, when can you say that you definitely know, yes. is very important. And you want to be on the lookout for people in society. And go, oh, we know that for sure. And what I say is, this is a, quite a remarkable press conference. And this guy comes out and he goes. Uh, it's it's my feeling that this is from around about five million years ago, <laughs> and then one of the pressmen goes, "Can you prove this?" And, and <laughs> Rody goes, "No." <laughs> <laughs> press conference. He's coming and speculating wildly. <laughs> I reckon it's about five million years old. Can you prove it? No. <laughs> this is what I reckon. Print that. I'm a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then they find a uh, a metal uh, cylinder. Well, yes. it's more of a cylinder Ooh. in the in the British one. It's a weird sort of like um, this is British, British well, you know what I mean? The, the BBC <laughs> the BBC version. It's like a, it's just a cylinder, pretty yes. much, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. But, um, on this, it, since it looks like a Jetson sort of space car or something, well, it looks yes. like a big um, hearing aid. I always think, oh. or like a big blue orthopedic hospital coloured hearing aid from the Ooh. 60s. Yeah. When everything was, everything plastic was that colour in our childhood, wasn't it? Yeah. It was yeah. like yes. a beaker for old yeah. people to drink out of. <laughs> so, um, uh, Asper inhalers? Yes. Were always that colour. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and my blue, blue or brown puffer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Um, so, so they call the bomb squad. Mm. And amazingly, when they turn up, it's just like a normal arm me jeep but just with the words bomb disposal written <laughs> yeah. on a sign on the front of the jeep which i put very factual no nonsense <laughs> very very kind of late 1950s isn't yes. it yes bomb disposal bang uh, but fans <laughs> of doctor who will straight away think of unit here won't yes. they yeah. yes and it's very unit-esque and and their kind of vibe is very brigadier and uh, uh, and uh you, Sergeant Benton, Mike Yates, and all the gang. None of them are in this film, but you can imagine they're there in the background. Well, you can imagine that they're they're working on a, 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 a the tube line next along, chasing yes. the Yeti with um, Patrick Troughton's doctor. 
or, or kinky clove as he, he was saying. Um, <laughs> so and, and, and they go straight in there. Stop putting the bones and chucking them out. Yeah, yeah, where, where yeah that's be- right. The science is gone. <laughs> just covering just things them. in. Um, I noticed that the army cover th- things in lots of sandbags and <laughs> um, canvas for some reason, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they can't, uh, help, they can't help themselves. Canvas. Dead, dead in the sounds of sandbags. Oh. Like every scene is them holding sandbags. <laughs> They're going to be doing a bit of business in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They, they, they talk to the one bomb disposal guy and he says to him, oh, come along, you're a young man. And I put, now oh, come on, he's easily 35. And I just put <laughs> people age so badly back in the yeah. kind of the post-war years. And I just think, you know, because by 1960s, it's like, would, would these actors all have gone through the war years? I suppose so, yeah. Mm. You know, and it's just like, As well, children, we'll see, maybe, maybe, yeah. Up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Remarkably, um, but yeah, there's no way that guy, that bomb disposal guy's a young man. Yeah. I'm sorry. And then... In- so in he, the meantime, have we seen? Have we had the scene where Quatermass is told that he's losing control of the rocket group? So that's what happens. They think they call up this this department to try and get this specialist. But and like as in every um, Quatermass film, he's being yeah. told that he's about to lose control. <laughs> he loses of, funding. Yeah, incredibly, <laughs> and he's just and getting put, really angry about it. And what yes. I put is, hang on a minute, we watched a film where he single handedly stopped an alien invasion. Yeah. You'd think this would give him. A little bit of credence with the British you. establishment. Uh, don't keep care. him on. Keep, keep him. Yeah, exactly. And they're still That's not going to believe him either. Whatever Build him up and knock him down, yeah. isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, right, okay, yeah. So you stop that alien invasion, but what have you done recently? <laughs> Your last album was no good. <laughs> <laughs> so this room he's in is this the room with a massive enlargement of the moon on the wall, which is the best yeah. interior yes. decor yes. ever? Yeah. Um, I remember yeah. watching this on VHS in about 2000, 2001, thinking, oh, my God, I wish that I could have that on my wall. Because it's, <laughs> be cool. it's the best image ever, isn't it? It's like a really huge blow up of like craters on the moon on the wall. And kind of fasci- fascistic sort of symbols over and it as well. Yes. Hilariously, yes. they suggest that you know, kind of they like, oh, well, Quatermass. You realise that we, you know, we've got to keep things to do with a war effort, the way that the world is going mm. right now, and that we need to get to the moon, and one day Mars, and what I've just put is the idea of Britain being some kind of superpower. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I like, yeah. hilarious, it seems to us now. It's like, yes. well, we've got to, we best help get up there first, along with America and yeah. Russia. We need yeah, to yeah, yeah. bombs God, up we, there. We can, we can open a corner <laughs> shop these days, successfully <laughs> run out loud. Like a moon base. Anyway, thank you. I got it off my chest. <laughs> um, so this is the introduction of Colonel Breen as well, isn't it? Mm. Who is Julian Glover here, who's very the good, great but a bit Julian young. Glover. Uh, I think he's cast yeah. a bit young here, considering, mm. mind you, everyone else in this film is only about 30, <laughs> but they look 90. <laughs> yeah. yes. But um, he actually does look quite young in this. But yes. he's a very kind of pompous military man. He's a toff. He's a toff. That, that, that is exactly <laughs> yeah. what I've, And I put that when, they, when, when he turns up at the site... Toff Julian Glover has arrived to boss around peasants. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Which is very, you know, the, the English class system is absolutely at work. Yeah, there. yeah. He's a very yeah. First World War style um, yes. Stephen Fry in Blackadder Goes oh, For yes. type of them. Sorry to interrupt, Ross here, just doing a quick plug. Did you know that we do a range of General Witchfinders t shirts? Go to generalwitchfinders.com, buy a shirt, and help support the show. Thanks. So what do we think of the old Quasimass's look in this? It's an interesting look. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about be- a bearded Quasimass. Well, I was just looking at myself thinking I look quite quite like Andrew Keir in this film. <laughs> but, um, you uh, saw that hat. Wait, uh, he, yeah, his hat is a funny little, like, is that a pork pie hat? Is that called? Or I'm not sure. What kind of hat is that? It's a funny little, and then he's got a funny little bow tie and a lot of checked like tweed material going on. It doesn't look very professorial, I don't think. No, I, yeah. First time I watched it, I was like, I'm not convinced. I don't like this great mask. But second time, I, 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 I oh, him a yes. bit. Yes, he's very... The best one is um, Andre Morel, who was down to play him in this film, but who didn't want to um, uh, uh, play him again. I quite like John Mills. I think Millsy is very good, but that is... A, that Quatermass is a whole other psychodrama 
Mm. <laughs> that I often have very lucid nightmares about because it's <laughs> such a weird one day we'll have to review it, but it's so long. Yeah. We could do it in yeah, parts. It's like ten hour long episodes or something. <laughs> I think it's four we get, hour long oh, episodes. If we get up to like episode 150 and people are still with us, <laughs> we're like, okay, we've got the audience now. But on the um on the uh commentary, they asked um uh, you know what would they do what would he do if he brought Creative Mass back now? And yeah. he said he would do young Creative Mass. <laughs> and he said that he would do him um visiting um von Braun. Oh. At, at, at the um, Berlin Olympics. Um, oh. And that was as far as he got, really. We oh. the but, uh, <laughs> well, there's I a lot of who in an eye in there, wasn't there? I reckon there? that could be pretty good. But, and something else he did say as well is that he does, he, he, he's seen as a science fiction writer, but he doesn't know anything about science, so that's why he always puts in loads of folklore ah, and all amazing. that. Amazing. That's well, really it's funny cool, you should mention it? that, because when we get onto their brain contraption in a bit, Ross, I may be taking them to yeah, task yeah, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, one day that will happen but I, I don't think the science was you know the technology wasn't available in 1966 is it? No, but they can do it now they can they can actually record your dreams can they it, it looks, they, can. they can Bill <laughs> Gates Bill Gates can do it by putting 5G into your neck yeah no I've seen I've seen it's really bad video of it but I've seen video of ah Cleves this is nonsense no, oh, no, we'll send no, you the no, links no, 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 no. Yeah. All right, okay, they can't yeah. get anything out of your head Right. <laughs> Look, luckily for you, it's all staying in your head, Cleves. They think that the um, some people think that it's a bomb. It's obviously not a bomb. Mm. Other people think that it's uh, uh, of alien origin, which it is obviously. Mm. Um, but Roni is adamant that the ape men are um, terrestrial, not extraterrestrial. Mm -hmm. So already we have the very. Um, Age old and always, uh, always to me, a very exciting idea from Nigel Neal that you've got this kind of folklore thing intertwined with eugenics and stuff. It's really hard yeah. to put your finger on what yeah. he's trying to talk about here, isn't it? And you think people watching this in the 50s. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's your Friday night entertainment. Yeah, when you think about the shit that's on TV now, when it's like, you know, did you did either of you watch a thing called Stardust last night with no. um, um, it basically it's like stars in their eyes, but it's more of a sound alike than a look alike, right? Right. Um, and the first guy that came out was Tom Jones, but he looked more like Vic Reeves doing Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up looking more like Fred West. Oh, and, gosh. I was, and I just thought it's entertaining. But then you think, you know, this, it, 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 you know, back in the 50s, you'd have like Bertrand Russell probably on at night, <laughs> nine yeah. o'clock doing like an exposition on something. <laughs> then you'd have Quatermass on. And now we've got like, you know, just dipshits Those and imbeciles. Those values and, are long gone. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then you have someone like Jeremy yes, Clarkson held up as a, a you know, oh. paradigm of like. <laughs> <laughs> so right. anyway. So while they are, so the, the bomb disposal unit, they start to sort of investigate the uh, the alien craft. Well, they still think it's a bomb at that point. They yes. think it could be a bomb, so on and so forth. And while they're still kind of playing around with it, um, Quatum says, "Oh, well, what's going on? Kind of, what's going on over the road here?" And they yeah. say, "Oh, well, they were going to knock down these buildings opposite yeah. as part of the extension of the tube." And they look up and they says, "Well, that's that's interesting, you know, because it's Hobbs Lane." Yeah, and, and he says, "Hob, that was a name often given to the to the devil in, yes. in times past." And you think that the Quatum, you know, for a rocket scientist, also has got a <laughs> huge encyclopedia. It's a bit of, of the occult. Later yeah, on, yeah. he just, he just yeah, recognised yeah. the cult symbols. And yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. But that's later on. And so He's a scientist. They, they just know all well, science. These houses. <laughs> okay. So they said, well, these houses were going to get knocked down too. And then he says, well, let's go, let's go and have a look. And then they go inside these kind of derelict Victorian-esque houses, which yeah. would usually be demolished. And what I put is, these are prime Zach Bagans territory, aren't they? You know, that, that set when he goes in. It's Zach Bagans would have had a what field a crossover that would be. But I would <laughs> say, in the, in the, like, my memory of the BBC versions, they do a lot more about the haunted yeah, houses they do. and they stuff. Do, yeah. And yeah. how, like, that they weren't actually, um, because they were saying, oh, people being evicted from here. And they said, well, yeah. they weren't. People, they've, 
no one lived here because it was yeah. it was so much like poltergeist activity and, there's and stuff. scratch marks on the walls and stuff isn't there and, yeah and like it gave everyone the willies basically it's yeah. a bit it was a bit ghost watchy really the, the policeman gets the willies doesn't he and he runs off yes. or something he sweats he sweats a lot he's a very sweaty policeman mm. Which is most police, policemen these days, I would have thought. <laughs> which, is, which is a bit, which is, oh yeah, which is a bit, um, <laughs> like the, the guy who, um, used to go to the place in Stone Tape, who, you know, doesn't want to go in there mm. and, and the scratching oh, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, once again, yeah. so there are scratches that kind of like very, there are scratches all over the walls. And we're told that the whole area has a, a reputation for being kind of dark and a disturbed area. More on that later on. Um, but for, for now, so having established that and that Hobbs End may have a, have a darker history to it, and as we said, it's not a case of science fiction. It's actually you know, something older and deeper. Uh, but yeah. also, it's also simultaneously science fiction is it, is a foot here. I was going to say, then they pop over to where the archaeologist is um, doing experiments, and he's not only doing experiments about like this, um, the prehistoric man digging up stuff he's also doing brain scans of people and trying to record their brain and 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 record what's coming out of their brains this isn't now please. this is about another hour into the film oh, isn't it? Is it 22 minutes in yeah it is is it this bit is this it bit yeah is yeah. this the guy yeah. with um the kind the of guy later, with later on later on they put that they, they put it on him no later but, on yeah. but, but you first see it here yes oh do you and what i put is i thought well, John jo might may be able to support me in this one. Is that I put that this is what I think Magic Alex's research lab for uh, Apple probably looks a bit like. <laughs> yeah. Some of the stuff that's going on there is, yeah. is, is very out there. It's a bit like our, um, our university um, yeah. studio as well. Right. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's, it's just one word and that's bollocks. Right, there's a guy called Henry Marsh. He's, he's, he, he's retired now. He's Britain's leading neuroscientist. Right? And he wrote a, his autobiography. So, after. 40 years of working on the brain. Think about that. Every day, operating on the brain. He's, he's like, we don't know how the brain works still. He's like, we don't. He's like, we have a rough understanding of it. But then he said, oh, when you ask me about the mind matter problem, he says, that's like asking a plumber about quantum physics. <laughs> and he's like, that's, that's where we're at with it. He's like, I'm like the plumber. I can, we can do things to the brain. But when it comes to actually understanding how the thing works, he's like, we don't know. Right now, that's him, and he's the Britain's most experienced neuroscientist. I just love the fact they were just like, and I, I wrote down what it is. I think yeah. he says, by using this, we might be able to work out what Ice Age men w- could could think and do. <laughs> and I'm just like, how? Yeah. How are you doing that? Well, well the, the, the theory they got is that they got a man whose head is a similar shape to the guy out of our feed the same pet, and put, I'm putting this thing on him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he then says to uh, when, they're, when they're talking about um, Tim Healy's head, but they uh, <laughs> he, he says to Quate, um Roni says to Quatermass, "Well, the thing about the uh, the skeletons that we found." They fit in with a known pattern of evolution, and I've just put rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> those skulls are five million years old. Yes, fuck off. No, well, well, <laughs> well, yeah, known when, is the, of evolution. when is the oldest human from like forty thousand years ago years or something? Yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah, I, I think yeah. there was a yeah. five million year old skeleton dug up um, in the uh, in the ancient Ram Inn, but the same sort of time oh. they put. <laughs> I think he put the roof on. Well, yeah, the roof was 9,000 <laughs> yeah, okay. years old, wasn't it? Um, it uh, have we got to the bit yet where they go and consult the um, the historian about no. the uh, the name of this street? And then he brings out a giant book with, with like, giant writing <laughs> in it. <laughs> and it. Which looked exactly, it was very much like the scene in um, Dr. Fibes when they went to see <laughs> yeah. the rabbi and he, oh, got, yeah. out. And he got out. Mm. <laughs> it's all linking together. Right, I, I always so. love that book. I'd love a giant book of history. <laughs> it, um, yeah, with, with like four with words a <laughs> page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Quatermass says, oh, might, might they be aliens? And he says, no, I'm afraid not, Professor. These are, these are humans. Mm. And, you know, and he's like, oh, okay, interesting, all right. Um, but they also, I've just put, I can't remember what the transition is or how we got there, but we're told that um, people who lived at, at Hobbs, uh, Hobbs Lane yeah. They often cite, reported seeing a hideous dwarf. Mm. And I just wrote that down excitedly. And I thought maybe we might see a, uh, a person of lesser stature dressed up. But no, I no. Was no there, there are no hideous dwarfs. A hideous dwarf. Who would that be? Noel yeah. Edmonds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Je- uh, Jenny Cranky or whatever her name is. <laughs> Jeanette Cranky. Jeanette, not Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Have either of you seen the Inside Number Nine episode, which is called Something Something's um, Dressing Room? Bernie yeah. Clifton's dress- yes, yes, Dressing yeah. Room. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, the, yes. lot, yeah, they're all brilliant. Yeah, I'm, I'm rewatching them because a lot of them I can't remember what happened. So. <laughs> no, really? You Ross, surprised me, please. Ross, I'm starting to worry about you. You're like, you can't remember the film, John. You can't really. You can, you can remember who we are. I've got a very full head <laughs> <laughs> with all the wrong information. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we cut be on a back. T-shirt before long, <laughs> <isn't it>? uh. <laughs> Well, we cut back to the soldiers who have now yes. completely uncovered the um the, the spaceship. Yes, and uh, they, they covered s- everything else in sandbags and Pugs. canvas. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, but they still think it's a, an unexploded bomb. We yeah. should explain that's what the bomb they think. They think it's a bomb left over from the Second World War. Which yeah, is, the they, Nazis. They, yeah, they still find they're, them they're, now. <laughs> so excited about saying that. It's the size of a quite it's a it's large so caravan far. or... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> A hell of a bomb, yeah. It's yeah. about the yeah. size of the thing the Americans have just been shooting down recently <laughs> and, and and not knowing what they are. Yeah. Um, right. And the, they say that the if you touch it, you get mm. frostbite. Mm. Um, and um, there's also a brilliant poster saying, buy British cheese, up a behind Lovely. it at one yeah, point. Nice. Um, and then some guy just sort of starts sort of screaming, doesn't he? No, hold on, hold on, Ross. First of all, I've got... They do the, <laughs> Is they, that they you, do Cleves? The, they, they they do the most man thing ever, which is I put if all else fails, set fire to it. <laughs> right? They they just decide that what they're gonna do is just get a bloody massive blowtorch on it. Yeah. <gasps> and yeah. again, Nothing no dice happens. whatsoever. Yeah. Nothing happens. Right? And then though, but in the process of doing that, that's when they then uncover the pentacle. Oh, yes. on it, yes. don't they? They find that there's a pentacle, an occult symbol. Yeah. Which he tells us, isn't there? And they're like Whoa! All right, okay, um, and then we get the guy freaks out, boss. Yeah, the, the, the guy who somebody... looks like um, uh, Melvin uh, Hayes, Nathan Howe. Yeah, Melvin oh. Hayes, exactly. <laughs> 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 or, or Frankenstein, as we we we, we do. Know. They, yes. Do they carry him away? Are they instructed to carry him away or take right. him away? Yes. Yes. Take yeah, take him away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the line from from uh, Julian Glover is. A man like that should never have been on this job. <laughs> which I've got, what, a cockney? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And then Quatermass is so freaked out by it, they offer him a whiskey, and then he says the immortal line, I don't normally drink before lunch, but uh, on this case, I will. <laughs> well, not this version of Quatermass, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, boozy, boozy lunch for Quatermass. He files in, so yes. Two bottles of good quality liquor a day. <laughs> That's Richard uh, Burton. So, so, um, so um, Creator Master recommends they get a, 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 a special type of drill. Yes. Yes. Bor- um, Borazan, uh, he reads from um, Wikipedia. And mm-hmm. this uh, this is my favourite uh, uh, character in the film, Sladden. Slatten <laughs> or Sladden? <laughs> the drill operator who is so, played by the amazing... Um, oh, I can't think of his bloody name now. He's in... He's a, he's a character actor. He's in lots of films like this and other films. What's his name, Cleves? Oh, look. He reminded me of James's dad. I don't know why. That was... <laughs> he's nothing like my dad. It just looked, he looked, he looked a bit like your dad to me. I, I, well, I just like the fact he's got a boiler suit. He's got a tool case. He's got a leather belt on, which is basically like under his armpits. And hmm. um, he, what's his name, Cleves? Come on. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Come on. Fladden, his name is. Okay. While, while Ross is looking it up, yeah. Um, so they establish that they're going to use this very high tech drill on it yeah. and attempt to break it through. And this is when we then get to the bit that Quatermass then says, "Well, I, I need to go to the archives of Westminster Abbey." Yes. Or wait, and I put <laughs> blimey, now that's good access. Yeah, just yeah, being able yeah, to yeah, drop yeah, a hat, yeah. I'll just rock up there. Yeah. And what's the put is that they use a thousand year old text like they would a copy of the old yellow pages. <laughs> yeah. like, no one's wearing gloves. So you're, Wang, <laughs> they just drop it down. Ooh, what does it say here? And then we <laughs> we learn that the, the whole area throughout the history of London has always had like a dark edge to it. And yeah. then he's like the, the vicar, whoever it is that's reading the Latin, is kind of explaining this to him. Then he says, and it says here about what went on at the whole. And then he goes, uh, quite a mass goes, well, I've got to go now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, but I have to leave. 
as you pass on this vital information. Yeah, just the, so, does he leave does, Barbara there to does. continue the research? Yes, I thought he did. Yeah, Bar, the, this this stupid woman will stay with you. And, uh, the the only guess, woman. Yeah, I've got other things yes. to do. Right. Okay. So he, this is the, you're talking about just say Duncan Lamont. Duncan Ooh, he, Lamont. Yes. Yeah, what else he, was he? What else was he in, Cleves? Uh, he was in uh, Frankenstein Created Woman. Was uh, he really? Yeah, playing the prisoner. He yeah. was in. He, he often plays mad men. He's good at playing mad men. Chief of Police in The Evil of Frankenstein. Amazing. Uh, he was in The Devil Ship Pirates. Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> Devil Ship Pirates. Man, oh, right. yeah. That's okay. a hammer <laughs> film, which isn't a horror film. It's about pirates. Yeah. He was in Ben Hur. Um, he really? Yeah. He was I in... think he's absolutely brilliant in this, and he steals the film. Because the he plays. He basically plays this guy who they get in. He does a monologue about insurance and how good it is to be insured. Yeah. Then he tries to drill a hole in this, um, the bulkhead of the alien spaceship. Well, yeah. We don't know it's an alien spaceship at this point. Um, and then what happens? Basically, they all come out because they're having the willies and it makes... Um, the vibrations yeah, make yeah, their, yeah. Eyes, their eyes roll back yeah. in their head. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Colonel Breen, he's very good at this point, Julian Glover, making his eyes go back in his head, isn't he? Yeah. And then he pukes. Yeah. And then it's, like, <laughs> it's something to do with the resonance, but then they go back in and there's a hole there and Duncan Lamont is like, oh, that's not my drill bit, that's the wrong size or something like yeah. that. And then it, like it all melted. starts to... Um, the wall melts then, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. It I just want to point that when they're trying to uh, basically get the drill to go through the, the spaceship, it, 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 it keeps, it won't, yeah, yeah, yeah. won't drill through. And what I put is, this is giving me flashbacks to when I had to do metal work at school. Yeah. This is exactly <laughs> my level of metal. Oh, I, can't get the, I can't drill in a straight line. Oh, it's all gone wrong. All oh, the drill bits fallen off. And I'm the just, best like, thing to do, James. Shambles. A- teenage shambles. Put a little... <laughs> Put a little oh. bit of masking tape on. Oh, all right. yes. Then do a guide hole and then drill in. Because the, the where, masking where tape will stop it, it from skidding. I learned that anyway. doing um, oh, that, putting a wing onto my um, Austin 1800. Morris oh. 1800. Well, yeah. never say that this podcast is an education. <laughs> right, so, yeah, so I just wanted to get that out of my system as well, that it just gave me a yeah. horrible... And I've just put, this whole film is a health and safety nightmare. <laughs> Everything is just being done really haphazardly, constantly. Yeah. At no point long- do they go, should we get, should we just take this thing, which is yeah. underneath a massive urban area, should we take it and put it in a lab somewhere in the well, middle of nowhere? Yeah. Now, nah, fuck it. Fuck it. Just it, it, it. it. Set fire to it. But, th- <laughs> but at this point, they still think it's a massive bomb. bomb. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really Nazis. Bomb. Well, at one point, haven't they put a magnet on it which slips down and then they've put like, <laughs> yeah. um, like a, what do you call that thing? They put like a stethoscope on it. I can't hear any ticking. No, no shit, Sherlock. Like, what bomb have you seen that looks like this? And um, they haven't evacuated London at all. No, they, no, no, they no, just, no. They're all just like climbing all over it. But I do like the mechanics and the um, engineering of the drill. It's not just like your, your average hand drill, is it? It's like no. a huge drill that swings around on a big arm that's oh, very, my. like, engineered. But that has to be powered by a, a, an external... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's an external power. generator, isn't it? Right, that's excellent. excellent. It's excellent. Well, they, the director said they really want, needed to make it look like it was something extra than mm. what they'd already done. So that's why they, mm. they sort of souped it up like that. <laughs> But um, like we were saying, mega drill. It that gets makes a hole through, but they know it's not from the drill. And then yes. we have this um, interesting effect where it's it's almost Whee! like um, psychedelic, think, bit, psychedelic. Isn't it? Yeah, like uh, they got like a black painted glass which they cr- obviously cracked and then superimposed that over the top. Very and they asked, they asked the director, so how did they do that? And you can see that he didn't know. And he's just like, well, that's. You know, that's just like like an animation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he suddenly goes, I don't like how people explain special effects in films nowadays. It just spoils all the magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know what we did. Well, it was probably Man. Les Bowie, who it says in the Wikipedia that they fell out because Les Bowie said it's a... Um, special effects film and tried to lead the first meeting which mm-hmm. would be called a tone meeting these days but obviously yeah, yeah. it's not a special effects film it's uh you know it's a piece of cinema so the wall comes down and then what's revealed cleaves um it looks like uh Lots of plastic with, <laughs> with lots of like plastic, um, sort of 
um, what do you call them? Um, grasshoppers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It looks like a window display from Jap- Japan in like 1967. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lovely colours. Yeah, the colours are amazing. And it looks like something done for like the Japan Olympics or something. But then behind there, there's like these giant locusts, isn't there, that, which they... Just you, they don't put respirators on. They just no. grab. Is that on the safety night? They just grab them. They, um, <laughs> pull them out. They lie them on sacks because they've got more sacks hanging around. And John, then, um, this is the point. This is the moment we're at. He says, "Quick, get planks and empty sandbags." <laughs> <laughs> and it's all four in the bits. <laughs> Yeah. Right, they're all yes. starting to break. Green yeah. slimes come out of them. There's all a great sli- picture. <laughs> Chris and Gubb is like, you can start like, oh, this stinks. <laughs> I love, I love all the little details in this film because it's like <laughs> slime coming out, and they're all pulling faces, and then they go and get an aerosol of like something to spray <laughs> onto yeah. them to and, like, and the le- and the legs fall off, and it makes me feel like. I feel like these things just started falling apart because they were shitly made and they had to make, they had to <laughs> change the, um, the script to sort of make out that, oh, that was meant yeah. to happen. Uh, well, like, like, Crater Mass says at one point, the reason this has happened is because of the filthy London air. Yeah. Which is- yeah. Yes. The great yes. stink of 1858 is back. You got it. Well, I was going to say that Helen and I watched a, three, a two-part documentary about the great stink on Channel 5 the other day. And um, if anyone can find that in Britain, it's it's a very, it's a fun watch where one of the presenters is is um in bed and they make him, for some reason, they have a professional makeup artist there to make him look like he's got uh, cholera. <laughs> <laughs> the big stink makes me set up my wrestling name. <laughs> the underground ape man. The big stink. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well, you're welcome to the ring. I'm an ape man. I'm an ape, ape man. I'm the ape. Man, <laughs> that's why I come on that. <laughs> in a leotard. What's this doing in here? Get him out of there! <laughs> 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 Jesus, Nang, that hits me with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we we should explain. I'm fighting Jimmy uh, Savile. My, my now dear departed nan, who bartered this mortal coil when she was like 103, she lived to a ripe old age. My nan, um, <laughs> <laughs> local wrestling bouts. Um, and she, and apparently, according to my dad, she would get really wound up, um, and I don't think she ever quite to the story, but I think she certainly would get. Wound up at wrestlers. Anyway, there you go. That's that's the story. Okay, I'm, I'm losing contact. You hear me? Anyway, that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm losing contact. You hear me? Anyway, that's that's okay. I'm losing contact. You hear me? You hear me? You look like we can't them. hear anyone. One yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. to. <laughs> oh. I've lost contact, so I'm gonna. Yeah. So, listeners, um, welcome back to part two of the uh, Quatermass and the Pit episode. Yeah. As, um, we have reconvened a couple of days later after Ross's computer has stopped um, playing up. And uh, why am I talking about myself in the first person? Third person. Second, third person. Third person. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, too many naughty websites, I think, on Ross's computer. Reckon that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too much. Um, What's her name? I was going to say Marilyn Monroe, but it's not her. Car- Carolyn Monroe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, too much, too much Vicky Michelle, I thought, basically. I thought, I thought he was going to say, say too much um, Carol Vorderman then. Oh. I don't know why. <laughs> That's only from us looking at Rear of the Year. Se- se- yeah, se- Sexy Sandra's uh, monkey, monkey birthday party, I thought it was. <laughs> Yeah. So I've just, oh, can you bleep well, out the words monkey? I, I 
Say monkey now, and I'll, I'll yeah. cut that over the top of it. Right. Monkey. Oh, there we go. There you go. <laughs> uh, although I'm pleased, John Ross. Told, Ross tells me that he, he did manage to capture the, the now legendary line. I've lost contact. <laughs> <laughs> lost contact. <laughs> so I think that should be where you fade the part yeah. one out, Ross. Yeah. Um, it, did, it, 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 James, you are right. It did remind me of um, not Douglas Bard. <laughs> what's his name? Campbell. Donald Campbell. Donald Campbell. Campbell. <laughs> yeah. On Coniston Water. She's going. She's going. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> oh no! What a horrible. Oh, what? it's nightmarish, isn't it? When you yes. think about that. Yeah. What is yeah, it? I yeah. don't know what you're referring oh, to. The bluebird on. on this on the water speed Com- record. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. And you can hear him talking. Was it 1967, James? So you can hear yes, him so talking. It, and then... it, yes. In the uh, that really amazing book, which, of course, I, uh, I can never remember the name of, they, t- they talk about... Uh, no, yeah, I was going to say <laughs> that. No, no, no. Just, I can't, I can't be, I've, I've t- it will take me too long to, to go into this, and it's not very interesting, so just, just plow on. <laughs> well, James, we're 35 episodes in you know, of basically going into something in too much detail See? and not being oh. very interesting. <laughs> what yeah, was it? No, no. Okay, don't worry about it. All right. I'll try, I think, I'll try I and remember people, by the end of the episode. I think people like our sideways look at, at, the, um, <laughs> That's at, the, at the 20th century's events. Yeah, I think, imagine like uh, all other media is destroyed and this is the only <laughs> thing which people can look back at the last yeah. 30, 40 years of the 20th century. Well, that's, that, that's like Will Self's The Book of Dave, isn't it? Where like society is destroyed and one of the only books that survives is the diary of like this London cabbie. And they, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> And this society has started to rebuild itself based on on sort of like the teachings of this sort of foul mouth London cabbie. So. I think we're yeah. we're starting to get a little bit self important now, aren't we? Yeah, just, right, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. we've decided that future on, civilizations will be uh, modelled upon us. <laughs> right, Quater Bass in the pit, jolly good. Um, they've just discovered that well, the wall has come down inside the um the ship, and all the uh, badly oh, made monsters yeah, are all, yeah, yeah. all dissolving, and green pus is coming out of them, and. Yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Smell, Smell in. Yeah, so that we start to talk about the big stink. So <laughs> that's what that's what destroyed it before. Yes, well, the actor is... who was made up to look like he had cholera. That was brilliant. What happened um, next? Well, basically, your your, your intestines start, start coming out. Non become... cholera. Oh, right. Okay, that was a good joke, wasn't it? Yeah, very good. <laughs> I can't remember what happened. I mean, they spray, they, they go and get something to, um, spray on the chitinous membrane of the, uh, outside of the insect creature, don't they? Just and, um, like when you've done like a charcoal picture. Uh, uh, yeah. Get some hairspray on it. Yeah. Well, I try not to these days because it spoils the, um, tones of, uh, uh, well, anything really. So I, I, what I do now is I put, um, grease proof paper over a drawing. And then I flatten it very firmly with a towel in between to, to try and stop the um, the smudging. Okay, Ooh. very interesting. <laughs> so I, I'm watching it now. Uh, so they've <laughs> taken some of the bits of uh, the aliens back to uh, the British Museum. Quatermass, <laughs> they're, now they're just letting Quatermass pull it to pieces with a pair of twi- tweezers. Quatermass, who is a, a rocket scientist, yeah. you know, this is the only remaining remains of a potential alien, proof of life from another planet. Just let any old scientist pull he, it to he pieces. He does that previous with Martians, though, doesn't he? Does. he, in, he um, does, yeah. uh, Extra, extraterrestrial life, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, they Broadhead! Must- Broadhead! <laughs> uh, i just also wanted to point out that when they were taking the aliens from the uh uh from the underground station one of them goes oh god it's it's all turning to powder no one will, will have nothing to prove that we saw it and i've just written just take loads of pictures now <laughs> just you've got a camera take pictures it's a very Did simple you, solution they must have had polaroids did they have polaroids in 1967 they must have done well, you're the expert yeah yeah i don't know so then they the go land, back and they're, they're the just... land camera, as it was called. Oh, so they go back and they're just sort of lounging around, reading magazines. Go, oh, hang on, there's an article in here about like the devil. The, these things... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they, they do look a yes. bit devilish, don't they? Well, and what is the magazine they're reading? Is it Chat or Bella? Something like that. <laughs> they're always about the devil, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing! Exclamation! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Take a break. 
I pushed cheating hubby into meat grinder, <laughs> etc. Or I went on on stag weekend with Satan. <laughs> Satan underlined. <laughs> Often pictures of people holding it, photographs, and looking sad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd love to get a job on those magazines. That would be great. Wouldn't it? <laughs> That was basically your whole career at Jumping Jackson, right? Yeah, a bit like that. <laughs> like photographing the future almost. Um, it would just be great to go to Blackburn and meet a woman who had like eaten her son by mistake in a pie, <laughs> in a pie or something. I always thought you were going to say that that woman who every time she ate Kentucky Fried Chicken, um, she got, got abducted by aliens. <laughs> Every time. Do you remember that documentary no. about British um, alien yeah. abductees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's on Netflix, or it was on Netflix for a while. Keep talking. I'll, I'll see. You've if it's got to watch it, John. It's amazing. It's brilliant. It's did about... it do something? To, did it do something to her blood pressure? Do you think? Oh, well. Helen's friend Charlotte. Every time she has a curry, faints. <laughs> and I think, I think, it, it, I think this woman must have something wrong with her blood pressure when she's eating a KFC, and she thinks she's being abdu- abducted by aliens. <laughs> okay, so the nice cars get driven up to um, John. So, any any comments on any of the cars in um? What what car is it? No, I mean, what is it? A police car? No, it's it's like the the car which the um the officers <sighs> drive around in. If not, I'll cut this bit out. It's and, probably a Land Rover or something, yeah. is it? Or is no, it like a, it's, it's like a um. Well, I would take a picture. It might of be it. A, it might be a Ford Zephyr or something. And I found the uh, I found that the the documentary is called Confessions of an Alien Abductee. Yeah, it is that still on Netflix. Good. And have you got John? Have you got Netflix? I ha- I think you have got it. Yeah, on the TV. It's, it's it's only fifty minutes long. I'll set I'll, I'll send the link through on the group chat for you. So, but it's it is a it's a piece of work. It also features the guy. So it features this woman who says she gets abducted all the time. But yeah. it also features this guy who I believe, because as you know, I'm quite obsessed with people that believe in conspiracy theories and things such as that. This guy has made quite a name for himself in America, and he's like a local counselor, and yeah. he just says that he has sex with aliens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, all the time and his mum's an alien and all this yeah. oh. and he draws just yeah, amazing hands uh, like childish drawings of like yeah oh. it starts off with, with that I'm looking at, at that right maybe we ought to do this <laughs> <laughs> there it is are you sending me the photo yes there we go yeah. identify that car <laughs> that's this sounds like a challenge from you bet <laughs> oh, um, that's a Humber, and it's something like a Humber Imperial or a Humber Super Sniper. I've heard the uh, word Super Snipe on this podcast previously. Yeah. yeah. Um, once me and my dad broke into a um, the grounds, I should say, of a stately home in Warwickshire, which at the time wasn't owned by the National Trust. We didn't know it, who it was owned by. And we found a Humber or a Singer, they're a very similar car brand, in a broken down garage. And that's a very, very vivid memory from my childhood. I'd say it was about 1990. It was um, part, part of what formed the man you are today. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. So, um, Quatermass <laughs> gets um, uh, called up to back to the ministry because basically they've done a press conference telling everyone yes. that aliens uh, have arrived and, yes. and the press have gone mad about it. And they're like, you're saying... You, you can't just like go out and say this sort of stuff, you know. We the the ministry has gone nuts. We, you know. Yes, but and I my note here is that the man from the government and I've just put why is this man livid at a huge scientific discovery? <laughs> Surely he'd be like, this is incredible. We discovered. He's like, you can't do this. You can't. This is outrageous. There are there are procedures. I thought very kind of like late fifties, early sixties Britain, isn't it? Everything yes. must be done by the book. And what have you? We're suddenly going. Oh my god, that's incredible. We've discovered alien life. These guys. Just you know what, James? I wish out. we still lived in that Britain as well. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Well, but just say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, look where that's got us. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And to try and get out of it, they then decide that, you know, people have got too wound up and too excited about this. <laughs> so, and Julian Glover decides that he's going to blame the Nazis. <laughs> and specifically, Goebbels. He says, these aliens could be part of a propaganda mission. I thought, yeah. now, come on. We all know that, you know, Dr. Goebbels and, you know, Total War and all the rest of it. But <laughs> come on, going, what I shall do? So apologies to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will send to the Tommies. <laughs> I will send them to crush their spirit. I will send them a rocket full of fake aliens <laughs> that will make them believe that they are being invaded. And you're just like, come on. I know they all did a lot of cocaine and what have you, but that is a bit far even for, go- for Goebbels, isn't it? The big, <laughs> the Madonna with the big boobies, big boobies. <laughs> will also be hidden on board. Wait, fight, is it Von Klomp? Cle- <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember which year. I remember my ex-girlfriend, whose name I won't mention, her school fate was once opened by um, Helga from Hello, Hello. What? Who is Christopher Nolan's aunt? Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, because she, she's in Dunkirk, the movie Dunkirk. <laughs> she is. As, as, as Helga. And, uh, and once again, pushing um, bit, tanks around a map with a long stick. <laughs> This, this, this won't help for anyone on the internet, but again, guys, I'll find a picture of it for you and, and send it to you. So Amazing. Keep, talking, keep, keep, keep going. Bizarrely, because, also, um, mm. uh, someone I know, their parents used to babysit for Christopher Nolan. Oh, it's a so There's a lot of it? mad shit going on with this episode, isn't yeah. there? All, all of the all of the tendrils are all coming together, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I think it's it's part of the new world order, isn't yeah. it? These are the <laughs> I don't Helga, know. I, all these people are going to take over. I don't know if um the listeners have realised that this is quite far away from us actually watching this thing now, so that yes. we are being quite uh, <laughs> we're, we're just are riffing on it. We're about riffing what on was it going now. on. Um, <laughs> well, you're the one watching it as we speak, aren't you, Cleves? What's happening? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Well, what happened? What, so... I've only saw it four times, John. I'm not sure. I know, and you can't remember any of it already. Oh, the 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 the, the soldiers are bringing lots of sacks out. And... <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, no, so basically, they're just saying, shut it all down. It's not real. Um, yes. It's it's all fake. So they, all the soldiers come out, and, and they've left the um the poor. James's dad with the drill in there on his to own. Disconnect it all, and then they say something like, "You boys can all get in there in the morning and have a good look round about the press, don't they?" Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah, going yeah, in yeah. itself. The the other mad thing about, and we've got to point out, is the, the two things. First of all, in order to try and assuage the, the you know the the already febrile general public who are getting very exi- excited about this, mm. they just kind of read out an announcement over the loudspeaker of the police car, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, and it starts off with. This is an official announcement. <laughs> and I thought, again, those are the days where you could just declare this is an official yeah. announcement and people would believe you. All right, People okay, would fine. listen. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> Boris Johnson does it now at a lectern and everyone <laughs> knows straight away that it's bullshit. It's a lie. Yeah, that's and that's a- the problem. <laughs> that's, the di- you know, that's the difficulty we're in. So then after calming the situation, as they said, they go, well, don't worry, lads. You know, ha ha, there's nothing to see here. You can go and have a look tomorrow. And as you said, the guy who Ross thinks looks like my dad, but doesn't. Um, and he, they, they, as you correctly said, they say to him, OK, go and dismantle the drill. And But we we then see him. We see his his wardrobe, which is quite remarkable. And it's something that... that it kind of stirred a, a, a childhood memory in me. I thought, you don't really see that anymore. That tramps would have a belt that was just a bit of rope. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I thought, yeah, wow, yeah. You don't, that's something that's that's gone, you know, the way of the quill pen. <laughs> it, really? It's very similar to what my dad used to wear to milk the cows. <laughs> and on a hot day, all he'd have on was his pants and a... And a um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a boiler suit that would be open oh. to his navel. <laughs> that's that's a bucolic yeah. scene, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> like when I think back to my childhood now, it it's indivisible from any time between 1850 and 1950. Yeah. I can remember, but my da- when it was hot, my dad would just drive his van with just a pair of shorts on, with, with, with the door open. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like a back. sliding door. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I can remember being fascinated by his bare feet. Operating yeah. the pedals, the pedal, yeah. no seatbelt, <laughs> just bombing around Bournemouth <laughs> with the child next to him. I think it was on in a deck chair because there was no, uh, there wasn't a passenger seat. There was a deck chair which was like now smoking the five cigarettes <laughs> yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So um, the, the uh, James's dad is in the putting apart the um, the uh, the drill, drill, and then all bits of fishing wire start picking up objects Ooh. around the place. And, and you yeah. can't see the fishing wire, can you? No, no, but it's obvious that, you know, I think, that's how I they think did it, these yeah. effects are really good practical effects. 
and it and it's very exciting and i still get great excitement watching this this is my favorite sequence in the film already well, sort yes. of like doing the like standing on on tiptoe and like oh it's amazing yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it's so brilliant. It's, it becomes a gibbering wreck. Amazing, he really well, the, does. So, so what is actually thing, happening at this point? He because... is being sort of possessed and taken over by. You know, from when we, you look at the book that we were reading, it's like some sort of genetic memory. Is yeah, right. like him being memory, in there isn't it? triggers some deeply held DNA <laughs> shonky science, but. Uh, you know, he is then kind of taken over and and sort of driven out. Mm. But yes. it's uh, in the film they kind of portray it as him doing what I can only describe as interpretive dance. Yeah, <laughs> really, you just kind of wiggles yeah. his way down. Where's the wind, so where's the wind but, coming from? Exactly, but then it's also well, accompanied it's a, by a huge gust. It's it's psychokinetic, isn't it? I think right. that it's a um, I think that it's a psychokinetic thing. That is brought on by uh, race memories of these, like um, these purifying culls that the um, the ant-like um, Martians went through. Mm. Uh, so he's he's basically got the fear of the he's got the willies basically, hasn't he? And he runs yeah. he runs through a, some deserted back lots of London and then mm. into some real street. But the yeah. best bit is when he runs up to. Um, like a tea van and all the plates fly up and it just goes mental. And I still, to this day, have no idea how, th- how they did these effects. The plates all go mental. And it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. But he, he, his performance is amazing. Then he finally, um, he gets to a church, doesn't he? Falls down outside the church. And then you've got this brilliant effect of where, where all the gravel is rippling. Some very good sound effects, and then he finds solace in the church, and that's where um, they sent for Quatermass. That's where our hero Quatermass and um, Barbara find him later on with a very um, photogenic vicar, Richard Burton esque. Yeah, very striking eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the, the guy who was possessed, I put he is. It's the return of one of our favourite categories from General Richfinders. The Survivor of a night out with Liam Gallagher in the West End of the 1990s. <laughs> That's what he looks like. He just looks utterly kind of drained <laughs> and broken. And it's kind of... Oh, I wish I could remember chair. some of the dialogue now, because it's like... The problem is, I can tell you the dialogue, because it's got subtitles on what I'm watching, but it's all in okay. French. French. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I felt it was like doing my French GCSE again, watching that version, Ross. (laughs) At one point, they had a line. It's like, Major, one of them says, and the subtitles put three exclamation marks after it. (laughs) Oh, come on. on. Say, que vous avez trouvé? I I know our our Francophile cousins, you know, not our Francophile, but our our Franco cousins do like a, uh, you know, and... Uh, a, a very animated uh, expression, but come on, three exclamation marks. He literally just went, Major? <laughs> but, Major! <laughs> you know, that's three exclamation Major, marks. Surely. Yeah, exactly. it, is, it, is a, it is a very <laughs> strange delivery like, of this guy's given. I, I don't know what the, what direction he was given. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I love it. Look like you're possessed. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, so what happens then? They just go, you never see him again. Do you no, face I'm sure the that the in film? the um, in the TV version, I'm sure this was a, a bigger plot point. I think there's more about this possession of this chap. I seem yes, to remember. Well, he's the first one that's really been um, obviously affected, isn't he? Yeah, and then it all starts to kick off a bit. And but I can't I'm just, quite remember how. <laughs> well, then so they, I'm going to have to very quickly put my philosophy hat on here. Is that, is yeah, that uh, Professor, Professor, on, thanks. Professor Quatermass gets involved in a theological discussion with the vicar. Um, and the vicar says, you must realise this is an, an evil. And Quatermass goes, oh, yes. Yes, it is. And what I put is, well, it's not, it's not massively evil, is it? Really? <laughs> it's, it's just an alien species trying to survive. Yes. It's not yes. the Third Reich. You know, they, they have <laughs> but, mm, in the grand scheme of things, they've just yes, it's yes. evil. Well, just because it's, it's it's made a man with a rope belt do some interpretive dance. <laughs> so, what they try and do now is try and recreate what happened by putting Quatermass 
into the um into the, uh, oh, the ship, ship. Yeah. and they right. wire his brain oh, up. Oh, the machine, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes so yes, they yes. wire his brain up, and they get him to try and reenact some of the things which um. Uh, but it doesn't work, does it? No, but mm. it actually, uh, but things start floating around, and he starts yeah. doing a bit of like a grimacing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, does it, it works like, on Barbara though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, he, he pulls yes. faces like Paul McGann. Uh, no, Sylvester McCoy. Tr- um, Regenerating into Paul McGann. <laughs> oh, or I was going to say, or like somebody's done three E's on a night out yeah. in, in, in a, <laughs> an all night Fantasia rave. So these are mine and James's <laughs> two different reference points. The reference point, yeah. 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 yeah, but it starts uh, it starts affecting Barbara. So they they put the um headset on her. On a, uh, yeah, yeah, and everything's sort of going correct. We've got um, barrels floating around and um, wires and wheelbarrows flying ac- around. There's it's, some very good. Um, mud pumping out of a wall i think isn't there is there like liquid mud coming yeah. out mm. so they managed to get on the television screen which is attached to their head um i, I couldn't find yes. the um the clip of where, where the people recorded people's dreams on the internet i'm you sure it, me, i'm sure it exists um, <laughs> um but so that's sort of how they managed to get this sort of footage of what um what this race memory is um which is the the clangers. Yeah, basically it, it, the clangers. Yeah. It, or it looks like some early Jerry Anderson work, doesn't it? Or, or the very or early. He or was he yeah. doing Thunderbirds around right about that time? Oh, I, I, yeah, Earlier. Yeah. Well, he started... Um, Bible XL5 and all of that. There were, yeah, there was a cowboy one that I can't remember that was in black and white. So supercar way as well. Was a supercar, supercar, yeah. <laughs> um, but this was Les Bowie or Les Bowie. I don't know if he mm. is related to um, Dave Bowie of mm. um, Dave Bowie fame, but... Um, <laughs> He's um, it, there's some great effects in this, but these parts aren't the best, no. are they? They're, they're kind of like psychedelic Super 8 movies, um, where the ants go on holiday. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's very weird. So they take this, like, this footage back to, to show the ministry, and there's a there's a everyone who looks very like after the show they're all sitting there and it looks to me like they're all just really embarrassed by the the effect <laughs> oh i think they're meant to be horrified aren't yeah. they? Ross, but, my notes i put is in real life imagine showing this to gchq <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining me at such short notice it's absolutely imperative this is a huge breakthrough yeah yeah roll vt <laughs> wow we plug these wires into this girl's head yeah. And, uh, and this yeah. is what came out. <laughs> and uh, I think all they say is she's a very impressionable young woman, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, know. and then she's just hallucinated. And and it's, quite a, much it's an amazing apparatus, but um, you know, she's got a vivid imagination because yeah. she's just mm. a stupid woman at yeah. the end of the but, day. But yeah, and the only woman, uh, pretty much in the yeah. whole of this film. Well, there is a um, Sheila Stifle plays a journalist at the start of the film who's on yes. screen for about ten seconds. Yeah, but 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 basically, um. But, 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 but basically, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cut that, but I gotta keep but, it but, in there. But basically, basically. <laughs> r- 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 rapido. <laughs> um, so, Quasimus just jumps to all these conclusions, which is basically just he explains what Nigel Nils what thinks thinks yeah. is, is happening, yeah. uh, and, and, if, and that is that is the truth. You know, yeah. he, he never says anything which turns out to be not the not the truth. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, but they just tell him that it's a load of rubbish, and we are just gonna. Blow it all just up. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just plow on us. Well, we're going to yeah. let the press in, mm. <laughs> and then maybe put it on display on the fourth plinth in um, Falgar Square <laughs> or something Why? like that. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so then, what happens? Does that happen, Cleves? No. The press come in. Um, yes. Some some reporter gets really close. In order to write on his pad, like he could, yeah. he could have written on his pad from the back. Like, why does he have to get really, really close in order to write in there? And, he, and I think he gets electrocuted, and then it all kicks off in there as well. And there's a bit of a stampede, isn't there? Yeah, people trying to get out of the um, out of the, the man from the min- ministry gets squashed by a camera, doesn't he? And he's like, "I've got to file my report." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and and the um, the captain um, from. And by straight back. That, this, yeah. this is my favourite um, bit, but he can't stop looking at it, and his yeah, face yeah. starts getting Transfixed. All, all gets yeah. burnt off. Which yeah. is that's probably my favourite effect in the whole. It's an, it's an amazing yeah. effect that is, and that is cut from versions I have seen on TV to this day. That oh, okay, it's wow. to horrifying. Um, it's a precursor to um, Empire uh, uh, Indiana Jones kind of effect. I was about to say yeah. of the Lost Ark. Yeah, 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 the yeah. End of that. It's yeah. also a very strange um, sort of like overlay effect on the ship where it looks it starts glowing white with like veins all over it. Yes, which I'm not sure what they're trying to. 
No. I, well, I think they they they're trying to make out that the ship somehow is alive. And, yes, and I thought that it's alive in conjunction with the um, aliens, and it's they're kind of. Um, uh, symbiotic. They've got a like a kind yeah. of symbiotic right. relationship. The, the 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 brain power of the aliens powers the ship. It's mm. not you know it hasn't got a propulsion system that's a normal kind of. What I quite like about this is yeah. unlike a lot a lot of stuff you s- see. Yes, it is all quite psychedelic and quite like unknowable and and weird. Uh, like like the like these effects you're seeing now with like veins coming on on yeah, things yeah, yeah, is yeah. you don't really kind of see that kind of stuff until you get to like um Cronenberg and things yeah but, and it's that weirdness in like a film from the the sixties you know yeah. which is and they're all really good practical effects as well so yeah. they do look kind of not realistic but they have a hint of realism to them because they're like effectively like painted onto glass or something aren't they they are they're they're not it's not it's not a a, you know league of extraordinary gentlemen or something like that where all of the special effects are so bad that sean connery felt the need to retire Uh, uh, yeah. He only took that job, didn't he? Because he turned yeah, down Ga- I, I, Gandalf. Because he didn't, he didn't, didn't understand. He didn't understand. He was offered Gandalf, and he didn't understand it, so he turned it down. And then he saw it was it was a massive, um, it was a massive hit. So he, he took the next job he was offered, and then which was, was that? Yeah. Oh dear! I I started trying to do an impression of him then, but it very quickly turned into yeah. Tommy Cooper, and I, now I can't <laughs> remember. Uh, I, uh, it's absolutely. Pushy, pushy. It's very easy to go between. Just like that, sir. Right, well, it's just like that. Spoon jar, spoon jar. I spoon jar. You don't only live once. You only live twice. My impression of Tommy Cooper sounds like my impression of the boxer Tyson Fury. Yeah. I've already said to him, I've told him, I'll beat him in the ring. I'll come, on, come, on, come on in here, I'll meet him in the ring. <laughs> what does he call them? He calls them something like sausages. He's a sausage. <laughs> he's a sausage and he's a sausage. Well, who are we talking about now? Tommy Cooper? Or... Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, same difference. They're both big men, aren't they? Men, yeah. yeah. What? I mean, the only way you can tell them apart is one's wearing a fez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I'd show the kids the plank the other day. Oh, right? yeah. And, uh, but it's, it gets quite like, you know, them sort of picking up some woman and like looking down her top and like touching <laughs> her leg. And I was like, okay, I'm going to turn Ross, this off. Can I just say, this is an ongoing theme. Of, I thought I'd show my daughters the footage XYZ Anything with from the past without <laughs> either properly reviewing it beforehand yes. or just going, oh, that'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you joined yeah. Cloverfield the other night. <laughs> and I, showed, <laughs> I showed that to the um the five year old. Not five, she's seven now. Seven. She enjoyed that. Uh which one is that the one with the monster or is that the one where they're locked yeah. in the basement? No, the monster. I don't think oh, I'll yeah. share the locked in the basement no, one. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Is that JJ Abrams? He produced it. Produced it. Yeah. yeah. He's terrible, isn't he? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I I started reading his um what he's come up with. And I just thought, what a load of shit. He's just ruined every franchise that he's touched <laughs> by just going in, not having a plan, and then trying to like sew it all back together at the end. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. We should point out that there is a massive riot because the energy from the ship then kind yeah. of, as John says, that the, the kind of it sets off the genetic memory of everybody in the area. Yes. And the whole Martian thing of fight to survive. Yes, the, you know the survival of the fittest that spreads around the entire area. So yes. everyone in the W10 area, you know, years before the Notting Hill Carnival would spring <laughs> happiness <laughs> and joy and and policemen dancing with rasters. Uh, years before that, <laughs> it just leads to chaos and punch ups. Yeah, yes. uh, right. People climb up buildings. People, people jumping out of buildings. Crazy. Yeah. In the TV point- version, it's it's mm. even worse because um, it starts to spread around the world. I think. Whoa. And there's a point where um, there's a plane flying over London, and the people, the pilots flying the plane, start to feel weird, and they actually wow. crash the plane. So it, it's it's 
it's much more um it's, it's much darker. more um uh obvious isn't the word I'm looking for, but mm. that will do. It's much more obvious in the T V version that what's happening that mm. everyone's having a bit of a meltdown and um it's this kind of like what you see then a, a, a series of scenes where it's like this them and us kind of um, yes. thing where people have got these telekinetic abilities then to kind of kill the people that aren't like them. Yeah. So you see a guy get stoned by a crowd and stuff, doesn't he? But they're well, throwing the stones with their mind and stuff. Yeah. I put I put down he looks like Professor Stanley Unwin. And I put <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Unwin stone to death, Leo. <laughs> yeah. Is, there's a bit in a pub as well, isn't there, where they're all watching it on TV and they're like, oh, put the TV on it. It's it, on. It, that alien spaceship's round the corner. And then, um, <laughs> and then it obviously goes wrong and then everyone in the pub starts going mental, don't they? Yeah. Like quite um, a mass even, gets possessed. Even quite a mass himself yeah. starts going a bit and funny. And he's going to kill yeah. the yeah. archaeologist and I think he uses mm. his psychic powers to throw like a table at him and yes and he actually really got hit by it while they were filming it they, they is said, that true yeah yeah um yeah but, but professor but professor, uh, professor roney is not affected so he mm. he uh, cleverly and quite interestingly he kind of transfers to being the hero at this point doesn't yeah. he because mm. quatermass has been kind of um otherwise engaged yeah unfortunately. But, but he manages to snap him out of it yes um, and we see lots of kind of like lynching um going yes. on and and the bit i find really sinister is that they're um they uh, realize that they're turning on cats and dogs as well and killing like cats and dogs and stuff that bit really gave me the willies mm. i thought that was very horrible it's, yeah um, if you think of this you think of the last quater mat you know these aren't like small scale things are they yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got he's not afraid of sending it and then everyone in the world went insane you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 But in the next film, you know, it will go back to semi normality, but yeah, not. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, and then, but uh, people still won't believe him when he says something's yeah. going to something so Yeah, well, the next film, God, is sort of the most depressing thing I've ever watched. <laughs> um, so what happens then, Cleves? Uh Well, then we have a, mod, a really good model shop of all the buildings all oh, just I love all the coming down. Yeah, 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 yeah. It basically it looks like Albert Square is being destroyed, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And um, then there's some some light starts cracking and coming up through, through the through the um through the yes. ground of the building. So the ship at this point is kind of metamorphosizing into like a power entity, isn't it? And coming up mm. through the kind of uh, floor mm. and in the shape of a devil. Yeah. So they got this. It's not actually very good effect. This one is it? That's no. all right. It's okay. <laughs> It's, it's a, yeah, it's a, a giant glowing Ring. devil kind of thing comes up, and they, and they decide. Well, it looks quite similar to what people think aliens yeah. look like now, don't they? Sort yes, of- all the devil, and I think that works very well. That kind of duality. Mm. It just is a bit disappointing at the end that it looks a bit like. Um, remember those toy glow worms you used to get in the eighties? It yes. reminds me of one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'd have to leave under a lamp for like two days, yeah. <laughs> and then it would glow in the dark for like twenty minutes under yeah. your bedclothes. Yeah, uh, it looks a bit like that in, but in the sky. So then they decide that they're going to the. Uh, what they need to do is ground the energy from that. Yes, and there, there's a convenient big um, uh, metal crane, and th- this reminded me of um, the the woman who found to wo- found to earth the first Jodie Whittaker Doctor episode. Yes. It's- Absolute rip off of it, isn't yeah. it? Oh, hundred so percent. We should yeah. just have to do the chase up there. But I was thinking, there's no reason for him to get to the top and then climb to the very end of it. No, um, the- <laughs> he doesn't do it. He doesn't do this anything when he's on the train. The, this is the one practical part of the film which doesn't come across. A little man on the end of a crane by moving around isn't going to be able to swing a crane round. <laughs> what actually happens is that it shows the foundations of the crane crumbling doesn't it yeah. and then he falls into the thing on the end of the crane and and thus what, is killed whilst quatermass is actually punching a woman in the face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stop, out, stop out of it you stupid and again bitch. for people that haven't seen the film we should write that's roney doing that isn't it yes. roney sacrifices himself heroically yes not, yeah. not professor uh, uh, quatermass is, uh, is, is punching his um yeah punching the woman uh, you know what a rat sounds like you sh- stupid woman <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of angry men in uh and what's Nigel again, Neal's uh oeuvre <laughs> yeah and and the end 
And well, yes, it leads. This, but this not very quite kind of... the end, because mm. <laughs> you're left as we as we started with with this um, sequence, this um, weird loop, weird loop of them stood with very, very, very depressing music by Tristram Carey, which doesn't sh- really tie in with any of the other music in the film, and then with like London on fire behind them. Um and like sirens and stuff. Is there sirens and things like that? And like f- fire sound effects. And it, it's basically like, wow, that's a really. But it's not quite <laughs> long enough for the titles they got, so they have to. No. So they have to loop it. Good. But that's what I like about the loop is that it's like it's almost like a an art installation. That it's it's just it could go on forever. It's that is that infinite that loop at the end of the film. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of the Quatermass universe yeah. that just happened yeah. that they're just stuck on loop forever? And, and are, are they the only two people who survived? You know, well, exactly, yeah. Because it doesn't really explain that, oh, everyone's fine now, does it? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. There's, like, there's no coda, as with so yeah. many of the films we watch. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. And then afterwards, there is no afterwards. That's what I always love about a Hammer film, that it's like, right, End. okay, guys, yeah, we're at, it's 10 seconds over 90 minutes. I'm sorry, you're going to have to lose the bit that says, you know, Everyone's fine. Yeah. I, I think we'll just put the end on at the end and just cut that it there, you know. Yeah. Hi, it's Ross from the General Witchfinders. Did you know that I also do another podcast with my friend David? Hello. No, I had fans before that. You're not taking this seriously, Ross. David and I do our own supernatural research and investigations in our home county of Dorset. So, if you think that's up your street, why don't you give it a listen? It's Dark Darset, D-A-R-Z-E-T. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. It's not that. <laughs> so, thoughts. What do we think of Quasar Mass in the Pit? Hammer version. Well, I absolutely, obviously I loved it, so I'm not going to... No one's going to expect me to say anything different, are they? <laughs> so what, what are you going to give it out of five then, John? What? Uh, oh, and here we go. I'm going to have to get all So, of... what have we got? We've got the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I have to get the bloody. I should have this ready. Google Drive. We've got the road. Well, up don't there, let daylight in on magic. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> Explain our secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Don't read out the address where people can put their own scores in. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what what do you want to know? The, your highest scoring things, yeah? Yeah, three. What, what's my top three? <laughs> John's top three are... Uh, well, you've given loads of things five. Sapphire and Steel, Stone Tape, Sister Up Race of Dracula, Dead of Night, The Omen, Earth Die Screaming, The Reptile, <laughs> The Signalman, and Night and Eames, The Road. You've given all of those fives. <sighs> So it's got to be a five, isn't it? Well, it's yeah, it's a five. It's a five. Yeah, but it's like uh, it's one of the lower echelons of five. For me, I think the top top echelon is the road, mm. and then I think it 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 comes down from that then. So it's, a, it's, it's a five. A stro- it's, I mean, it's, it's a very strong showing for Nigel Neal in in general, isn't it? Really? Mm. Yeah. Um, for me, yeah. I, I think I preferred the, the, the BBC version of it. Mm. Um, just because it's more episodic. Um, I think I was able, I think I did watch it not all in one sitting. And yeah. I felt like each episode kind of like tackled a different idea and a different element of it. Whereas I feel like when it was put in the, into the movie, a lot mm. of these things is like, well, then this happened. And it's like, well, hang on. These don't feel like they're, they're, uh, related to each other. And I feel, I, I, so it kind of has that sort of leftover from the episodic side of things. Mm. Um, and I feel like if I hadn't watched the original and hadn't done some research of it, I think I would have struggled to work out what the hell happened at the end. I think it, yeah. I think it just all went very confusing. Um, but saying that, again, talking to you guys about it has, has improved my th- thoughts of it. Mm. And also just watching, <laughs> watching some of those effects at the end with, with no sound on and, and just, you know, taking in mm. you know, the actual craft of the, the filmmaking at the yeah, end yeah yeah it, i think like some of the um you know the devastation and the um the the the, uh, the tube station coming down and the crowds of people and the and the, the, the mob fight you know, that's better than anything i've seen in a in a, in a hammer horror yet mm. it's really good for a hammer film yeah I think, it's yeah. You, you know you did imagine some of that 
production values in a, a, a Dracula film, which yeah, yeah, it, you'd be great. <laughs> Imagine having more than three extra, extras extra, in Charles Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna we're gonna storm the castle, all three of us. <laughs> um, we'll so take I'm it on a road I'm giving it a free. I'm giving it a free. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> really. Yeah. James, what are you? And thoughts? also, I've got to say, before you even say, said it, Ross, I thought I'm probably going to say a three because, you know, going right back to the start of the episode, which feels like days ago. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, the, when we did that, and we, you know, when I read that thing in, in SF UK, and you do think, once again, hats off to Nigel Neal, hero of the podcast. But it's a, it, there's some really interesting ideas there. Yeah, so, the ideas and, and are that, amazing. And for, you know, for bearing in mind that you know, he wrote that in the 50s, the whole kind of humans have been created by an alien life or you know that has gone on to be such a rich vein of uh ideas. basically the entire run of the x files files exactly that <laughs> exactly that and in that but in the book john it says that when the x files came started up loads of people said oh this is really nigel neil-esque oh, and, really? apparently they, and apparently they did approach him and said would you write some episodes wow. for us and he said and he's and he said he wasn't interested he said he didn't like it. He found them both very boring. <laughs> he absolutely hated Doctor Who as well. As well, in, yeah, in yeah. the sixties, and he yeah. and he and he famously slagged off Doctor Who. So quite a crabby, um, yeah, unusual yeah. fellow, I think, in in real life. Yeah, and then the book also goes on to say that it's a very, very similar plot to Nigel Car- is it Nigel Carpenter. Oh my god, um, it's a John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Yes, it's exactly, and apparently at the time, it's kind of like uh, it was. Uh, Carpenter wrote the script under a pseudonym, that which is a nod to like. So, yeah. I think he said, "Oh, it, the script by somebody quite a mass and things yeah, like yeah, that." Yeah, you yeah. know, I think it's, um, so I think one of the character names or one of the credits in um, uh, the Fog is like quite a mass or yeah. something as well. Yeah. So I think John Carpenter is like a mega fan. Yes, um, I think yeah, you can see um, that. So, so once again, very, for the influence Prince of darkness is very similar on a surface view. Otherwise, it's quite different. But um, so, do you, what do you think? Do you prefer this to the Christmas two? Me, uh, I, I do oh, both. I, you. Oh. I prefer Christmas two. I think. I think they're so different that it's hard to. It's, it's not a real compare and contrast, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's hard to compare them because they're so different, and one is. The black and white one is such fun, mm. you know. Mm. Sid James being machine gunned <laughs> behind yeah. a, a, a bar, yeah. you know. You, it, that's yeah. So you can't really compare them. I think this one. I don't know. Actually, I was going to say this one is played more seriously, but that doesn't mean I don't think the other one is played mm. uh, unseriously. I just think it's a different. The other one is a lot more rocket ships and and. Little, I've never seen the of. first one. I've never seen. The, oh, the, that's brilliant! Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's amazing. Uh, we should do that one as well because yeah. that one is. Um, uh, you just look at someone like um, Val Guest, who was the director, mm. and you think of all the things he did. He did quite a mass, and he did like Confessions of a Window Cleaner or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's like, um, what a mad! I I would love to have a career. T- trajectory like that because i think that that shows that you're really like adept at doing stuff um i think that's just really interesting whereas so like, we can see this director isn't adept at doing stuff because he did a load of, a load of old <laughs> shit after yeah. this well a night to remember is amazing yeah and, and well, then, he, he mentioned it about 20 times in his commentary oh, really? yeah. yeah but then <laughs> otherwise it's just like you know just um hammering out a load <laughs> that, that that isn't a um deliberate uh pun but hammering out a load of old shit otherwise isn't it really i'm sure yeah. he's a, he was a lovely man if his family are listening right i don't think we got time to do um something horrific because okay we this is this is gonna be a two-hour episode because we oh, did an hour before and an hour yeah, yeah, now yeah. so okay, all i've fine. done is rewatch count magnus and um okay cool. uh read a few stories i've read before okay so we will do a uh, we will do a um something horrific next week people um next week people next time <laughs> okay. well, um, I just, I again. we will do something horrific next um time. we would do something yes. horrific next time uh listeners um this has been a bumper episode already but we can reveal what we're going to watch next. So I've got a question for you guys. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Is that the, just the two of us or the listeners? Uh, 
just just the real people here. The two <laughs> two my co hosts. You're right. right, Glee. No, I'm very tired. He's eating a whole quiche job. Old... He needs a poo. <laughs> <laughs> I need a quiche poo. <laughs> so next up, we have yeah. a, a big Chris Lee um, uh, oh. film, which uh, a, a lot of people are missing um, Chris Lee um, in our thing. So we were going to watch The Mummy from 1959. Right. But we've had... Just, just a, watch the action bits. We've had a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, activity on Twitter of people mm. trying to get us to watch The Shout, which oh. is something which has been on our yes. um, list since I'm the very first finish. episode. So yeah. what shout. do you want to do? Do you want to watch shout, The Shout or The Mummy next? Well, I saw someone say on Twitter that um, Shout, uh, Ennis Main, is a big, is very influenced by... Um, the shout, so yeah. I think we should do the shout. Okay, so sorry to people, we promised a bit of Chris Lee next. He will come. We will. Oh, there's plenty. There's always more Chris there'll, Lee. There'll be more Chris Lee coming, but we will. 200 films, so, yeah. you know. We will do a shout next time. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. And then we'll do that Spanish film that he did where he wasn't there when they were filming the bits with the lesbians and stuff, okay, everyone? <laughs> He didn't know they were filming those bits. Yeah. Like, Is that the Marcus Assad thing? <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he did the monologue. He went home, he took the money, and they made the rest of the film, and it was lots of lesbians on, on a sun lounger. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Okay, until, until next time. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs> thank you very much. As always, we appreciate it. Enjoy. Uh, Love, light, and, and peace, Stay safe everyone. until next time. Happy day. You have been listening to The General Witch Finders. Support the show and continue the conversation at patreon.com forward slash general witchfinders. Subscribe and spread the word at generalwitchfinders.com. Farewell. You don't have nightmares. Well, I've just eaten a, a family-sized quiche. So that's all good. Oh, what? <laughs> he said, that's what he was doing when I came on, John. Yeah. I said, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, eating my quiche. Well, I'm not having anything with it. quiche. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not having anything with it, no. <laughs> just just your entire Eish. week's worth of uh, saturated fat in one, like, sitting. I'm trying to build muscle, John. I need lots of eggs. Oh, are you? <laughs> Is that, did you get that from... Um, Big Daddy. Uh, um, no, uh, Nigel Ben's son was um, <laughs> banned from boxing because um, he tested positive for some kind of um, uh, drug, which is uh, which pregnant women take to mm. to um, inc- increase their blood flow or something. But he's successfully proven that he he, he um, before this fight that he took the test for, he was eating t- lots of eggs. Yeah, and apparently, like. Um, this same drug is found in eggs, so... Um, yeah, that's probably... That, that was it. <laughs> you, I, like, how many eggs he must have been trying to eat? Like, Cool Hand Luke, maybe he was, like, <laughs> eating, like, 25 hard-boiled eggs in one go or something. It's what... Yeah. It's what... Today, it came up on the news the other day that they've... Um, they, they're making this fatty weight loss injection, which is really popular in Hollywood, available on the NHS. Oh, yes, I've yeah. seen. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, fuck, where do I get this from? And then I just yeah. uh, skim past all the side effects. Come on, come on, yeah, come on. Yeah, where can yeah, I, how can yeah. I get it? How can I get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. A little insight make, to my What does my it brain. make you do? It just makes you shit out all your fat, doesn't it? Well, I do that anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm losing contact. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm losing contact. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear anyone. One second. I'm going to have to... I've lost contact, so I'm going to have...